Jesus, my Savior.
Father, we thank you for the worship experience of this church. Such a blessing to be at Palm Bay. I ask, oh God, that as we open your holy word, that you would cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Fill my life with the Holy Spirit's presence and power. Speak to me, through me, and for me. I promise you, Lord, I'll always give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I got to tell you, I know it's never happened to you where you started driving home and the Lord took you to the mall before you got home. You got a little happy and ended up at the mall before you got home. Amen. Well, I started preparing this sermon and the Lord took me to a place I've never been before. So the title of my message is How to Be Happy No Matter What the Situation. Amen. How to be happy no matter what the situation. Come with me to the banks of the River Jordan as John, the cousin of Jesus, was baptizing the people who came to him in search of restoration and repentance. John lifted his hands to bless another baptismal candidate when he saw that moving through the crowd towards him and coming to be baptized was none other than his cousin, Jesus coming into the water. John said, Jesus, I have come to seal through baptism my determination to walk in the light of my Father's will. And then the Bible tells us that after his baptism, the scriptures record that Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now friends, next to the death of Jesus on Calvary, his burial and resurrection, the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness are considered to be some of the most important and pivotal events recorded in the Bible. Now why, you may ask. Because you see, if Jesus had not been successful over the temptations in the wilderness, there would have been no Calvary. Are you with me today? Had Jesus not been victorious over Satan in the wilderness, there would never have been an empty tomb. Had he not overcome the devil there in the desert, the resurrection and the ascension would not have mattered to our rescue, recovery, redemption, and restoration. Had Jesus not been victorious in the wilderness, the plan of salvation would have failed. Well, the Bible tells us that after 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, Jesus was weak, and even though he was drained and diminished, Jesus was still determined to live in harmony with the will of his Father. And one day there in the wilderness, praying in his weakened condition, Jesus sensed what appeared to be the presence of an angel from heaven. The angel said, I've come with good news. God has seen the travail of your soul and he's satisfied with your suffering. He told me to tell you that your fast must now come to an end. And if, 
if you are the son of God, command these stones to be turned to bread. Well, right away Jesus knew that this <clears throat> profane intruder was none other than the devil himself. For who else would question his relationship with his father and use such a blasphemous interrogative phrase like, if, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. But because you see, church, Jesus studied the scriptures as a young boy. And because his mind was so saturated with the word of God, Jesus was able to answer with a ready reply. Because Jesus studied and read the scriptures in his youth, he was able to draw from an arsenal of scriptures in his mind. He was able to find weapons in his mind with which to fight the devil. So when Jesus was tempted, the first thing he said to the devil was, let me tell you what I read. In the old English phrase, the words are, it is written. So watch this, brothers and sisters. I want you to watch the screen. When the devil said, turn these stones into the bread, in Matthew 4, 4, Jesus answered saying, what? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And when Jesus said those words, man shall not live by bread alone, all he was doing was repeating and restating what he had rehearsed, read, and memorized from the book of Deuteronomy. Because look at this, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It says, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know, look at, look at this now, he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only. Look at that. Jesus was quoting from where? The book of Deuteronomy. Man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Now, Church, Jesus was well studied in the book of Deuteronomy. Because look at the next temptation, the second one. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, right? And setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. In verse 6, and saith unto him, What? Come on, say it with me. If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down. Now notice this, notice this. And then the devil said, for it is written, it is written, he shall give his angels. The devil's quoting scripture. <laughs> to Jesus. It is written, thou shalt give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now, did you notice this time, the devil begins by quoting scripture out of context with a nefarious, wicked motive. The devil said in his temptation, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Now, Jesus answered in chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, it is written, what did Jesus say? It is written also. <laughs> You're quoting scripture, but let me also remind you what the word of God says. It is written also, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Do not try to test and trick me. This time Jesus was quoting from the book of Deuteronomy again. Because in Deuteronomy 6 verse 16, look at what it says. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. You see it? as he tempted him in Massa, And then for the final test in Matthew 4 verse 8, again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. Now notice those words showed him. Notice those words, what, what, what? Showed him, he did what he? Showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things I, what? 
I show you, I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence. Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Again, Jesus was quoting from the book of Deuteronomy, where it says, look at Deuteronomy 6, verse 13, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So the first thing we see is that Jesus must have spent a lot of time studying the book of Deuteronomy. Because when tempted, those were the scriptures he loved quoting from. Now one interesting observation, and I don't think it was an accident that the three subject areas of temptation just happen to be the three areas that make up the biblical definition of what the Bible calls all that is in the world and all that makes up the world. First John chapter 2 verse 16, the Bible says, for all, hey, are you with me today? All that is in the world is what? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of what? The Father, but is of the world. And those were the three temptations in the wilderness. All that is in the world. Turn these stones into, blesh, into, in, into bread. Turn these stones into the bread was a test of what? The lust of the flesh or appetite. Throw yourself off of the pinnacle of the temple. God will send an angel to catch you. Yeah, that's the pride of life and tempting God. And then the third one, the devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He said what? He showed Jesus. He did what? Showed Jesus. That is the lust of the? He showed him all that's in the world, right? All the kingdoms. He showed him. That's the lust of the eyes. Those three powerful temptations, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Those three areas of temptation are three powers in the world that are often successful in bringing down men and women. David was a classic case. David got brought down to the ground because of lust of the flesh, Lust of the eyes, and what? Pride of life. They were all used by Satan to bring him down. Now, church, those were the same three temptations in the wilderness. The very areas where Jesus was tempted in the wilderness were the same areas used to define the world. Because remember what the Bible says, all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. That encompasses all that is in the world. But praise the Lord, the Bible says, there in the wilderness, when Jesus was tempted, he prevailed. But notice the triumphant words Jesus used to describe his victory. They weren't words, he conquered the world, or he defeated the world, or he triumphed over the world. The word Jesus used was, look at it, John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, I told you I was on my way home. God took me to a happy place. I was studying the scripture. And I'm not sure, but I think I know why. The Holy Spirit led me to focus on the scripture and a key evidence or a key gift that God gives to those who overcome. And do you know what that gift is? Cheerfulness. Be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. So for the next few moments, let's look, look carefully at these words from Jesus. Now, notice Jesus said, in this life, you will have what? Troubles, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Now, the moment I read those words, I started shouting all by myself. Because what I heard was, no matter what, be happy. No matter what, be of good cheer. So I hope you forgive me this morning as I give God thanks for this prophetic word of encouragement from the mouth of Jesus himself who said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This declaration of encouragement, this positive word of inspiration came directly from the lips of Jesus our Lord in the good times and in the bad times. Be of good cheer. The older I get, the more I can appreciate the power and wisdom of this divine counsel. Be of good cheer. Those words of Jesus, they are a joyful, delightful command. Somebody say amen. Sometimes I have to whisper it to myself when people start acting crazy around me. Be of good cheer. Even the Bible doesn't say remember to encourage yourself in the Lord. So sometimes whisper this word to yourself. No matter what's going on, be of good cheer. When Jesus said be of good cheer, he also said I have overcome the world. That means the Bible is telling us, Jesus is saying, for you, I have already won the battle. He has already won it on our behalf. So be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. These words, brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. For me, they are a quiet invocation. They are a living assurance that God is with me. And those words, I have overcome the world, they say to me, God is on my side. No matter the troubles, no matter the trials, in the end, I'm going to win. You ought to be shouting happy all by yourself. This truth calls to me in the deepest part of my spirit. For me, it is a supreme word calling me to worship and honor and an adoration at his feet so I can be of good cheer because he has already won. I've already overcome the world, he says. Because he's won, you've already won. So don't worry about the pressures and burdens of life. As you carry them, remember, Jesus told you to be of good cheer. I don't know about you, but for me, those glorious revelations will never lose the power of their appeal. No matter what is going on in this world, and believe me, there's a whole lot of mess going on in this world. No matter what's going on in my life, I can be happy no matter the situation. This life teaching from Jesus will never diminish in its influence. That my Jesus told me in his word, no matter the troubles, no matter the tribulation, you go on and be of good cheer. This is a refrain that bears repeating over and over again. Never should you shrink from the power and dynamism of this great word. It is a word for the best of us. It is a word for the worst of us. It is a word for the best of times. It is a word for the worst of times. Be of good cheer. If you're happy in the Lord, notify your face. Carry this word with joy in your heart. Fix it firmly in your memory. Anchor it decisively in your soul. This word will lighten the burdens of your life. Somebody say hallelujah. This word will keep you forever happy. Be of good cheer. Other words may falter and fail, but not this word from Jesus. When the brutal waves of life 
beat relentlessly on the edges of your tender heart, this word will be your anchor. This word will be your rock in a weary land. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want you to know there is no hand that can wipe this word from my soul's remembrance. There is no stain that can blot this truth from my heart's memory. Be of good cheer. So brothers and sisters, I came to commend this scripture to you today and to say, I've been looking at you ever since I came up here and I got one thing to say to you. Cheer up! Cheer up! Look like you're happy. Look like you got good cheer when the winds of sorrow and disappointment surging all around you. You feel like your heart is breaking and you can't take much more. Lean on this word. Put your full weight on this word. Cheer up, man. My Jesus told me no matter what the situation, in the midst of trials and tribulations, be of good cheer. These are not my words. These are the words of your Savior, your Redeemer, your Lord, your Creator, your Friend. These are the words of he who is the bread of life and he who is the son of the living God, the only begotten of the Father, he who is the Holy One of Israel, wonderful, somebody called him, wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, he who is Alpha and Omega, your mediator, your judge, your chief cornerstone, he who is your Emmanuel, he who is the Lamb of God, your good shepherd, the image of the invisible God, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the great I am. He is the king of Israel. He is the bright and morning star. And these are his words reaching out to you in your depression. In your discouragement. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so I say to you, lean on this word. When dark circumstances surround you, lean on this word. When you feel like you've reached the brink of despair and the precipice of hopelessness, lean on this word. Put your whole weight down on this word and say to yourself, he who lights every star, he who guides every planet, is telling me he's telling me be of good cheer that he has overcome the world and so in the house of God today there are some of you I look at you you can't hide your fears it's written all over your face can't hide your concerns it's written all over your face. Your hearts are not at peace. You are tormented by trouble. The peace you seek seems remote and elusive. Even in a crowd, you, you feel abandoned and alone. Sometimes you wonder, God, is God near to wipe your tears and blunt your sorrow? I just want you to know Jesus is speaking to you today from his word. And he's saying, be of good cheer. So today, I don't know about you. But I'm not going to let anything or anyone discourage me for any reason. Because I searched the Bible through and through and could not find one scripture that said, be discouraged. It's not in the word of God. I've never found any reference that said, Jesus wants you to be disheartened. Jesus wants you to be downcast and low. Just the opposite. Wait on the Lord is what the, the psalmist said. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Be of good cheer. Refuse to be discouraged. And that's what I read. 
You because you see because you see discouragement affects your attitude. It affects your temperament. It affects your morale. It affects your self confidence. Discouragement can affect your health. And it can be crippling and debilitating. Discouragement can be the ruin and undoing of your hope. It can be the unraveling of your ability to handle the normal cares of life. You get paralyzed because you're discouraged and don't pay your bills. So refuse to be discouraged. Say it with me. Say it with me. I refuse to be discouraged. Come on, say it with me. I refuse to be discouraged. Discouragement can destroy your determination, your convictions, your fortitude. And I don't know about you, I am not about to let anyone or anything sabotage this positive outlook on life that my Jesus has given me. You might have to say to some people who through their attitudes and actions, you might have to say to them through your own attitude and actions, I am not about to let you with your moody, miserable self. I'm not about to let you with your cantankerous, prickly, prickly foolishness steal my joy my Jesus said, be of good cheer. So I'm not looking for your approval to be happy. Somebody help me this morning. I am not looking for your approval to be happy. I don't need your permission to be happy in Jesus. He already told me, be of good cheer. I'm not going to let you pour cold water on my dreams. Yeah. I'm not going to let you pour cold water on my aspiration. You, you want to wallow in your mood swings? Help me somebody. You want to wallow in your mood swings? You go on, I am going to be happy in the Lord. Because my God said, be of good cheer. You want to wallow in your erratic temperament? Erratic temperament? That's your choice, your business. All I can do is pray for you, you sullen, sulky. I'm going to do what Jesus, I'm going to do what Jesus said. He said, be of good cheer. Remain cheerful. Jesus said there'd be plenty in this world to discourage you. Brothers and sisters, there's a whole lot going on in this world to discourage you. Mothers and fathers, can I, if you are raising a piccaninny in, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm showing my culture, I'm showing my age. <laughs> Y'all have heard that word in a long time, piccaninny. But if you're raising a young un in this age, there will be much coming at you to discourage you. Parents, Jesus said, parents, be of discouragement. As a matter of fact, I read Ellen White said, parents, don't let a discouraging word come out of your mouth. Discouragement will take many forms. Sometimes it'll take the form of financial pressures. Sometimes it'll take the form of health pressures, health challenges and concerns. But this is what the Lord said. Discouragement, and, and God gave this to me. God gave, Discouragement will never make a bad situation better. Hey, is that the truth? Your discouragement will not make your bad situation better. So Jesus could have said it this way. He could have said, uh, you might want to think about being of good cheer. He could have said, uh, maybe you might want to consider. Uh, no, my Jesus said, be 
of good cheer. This is not a suggestion for your consideration. This is not a suggestion for your consideration. He says, just go on and be of good cheer. It's a positive command from the Lord. And stop letting, stop letting the littlest slight hurt, the littlest slight and emotional hurt cause you to lose your joy. So many people in the church, they're like wilting violets. You, you fail to recognize them publicly and they get discouraged. <laughs> Have you ever met anybody in a church like that? You met an elder, a deacon like that? You overlook them on a program and they get discouraged. You forget to call their names when you call some other people's names and they get discouraged. My Jesus said, man, be of good cheer. Fight the good fight of faith. When you feel like giving up, be of good cheer. He said, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. The world cannot overcome you, Ellen White says, while you abide in Jesus. Because you are more than conquerors. Amen, amen, amen. So when Jesus said, be of good cheer, there were no qualifiers. He didn't say, be of good cheer if. Oh, are you with me today? He didn't say be of good cheer when. He didn't say be of good cheer should. He didn't say be of good cheer under the right conditions. First, he was honest with us. He acknowledged before us that often the circumstances we live in are not going to be ideal. He said, in this world you will have troubles and tribulations, but still, still be of good cheer. No matter what, you can choose to be happy. Hallelujah, God. In spite of your troubles, you can choose to be happy because when Jesus presented being cheerful as a divine admonition, that meant that being cheerful who, would always be your choice. He gave you the choice. When he said be, he wasn't forcing you. He gave you the choice. It is your choice that only you can make for you. It won't always be easy. There will be pain. There will be pain. There will be distress. There will be grief. There will be sorrow. There will be loss. Everybody in life has to matriculate through a school of sorrow. Some of us will achieve advanced degrees. My God, my God, some of us will graduate summa cum laude from the school of sorrow. Look at John 16, verse 22. If you can put it up, John 16, verse 22. The Bible says, so also you have sorrow now. You have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you get excited about that word of God? John 16, 22. Also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will what? Rejoice. And then he says, for what? Your joy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The joy I'm giving you? No man. Come on, go back to that scripture. The joy I'm giving you? No man can take it from you. No man taketh from you. Amen. Amen. One day a huge clock was built in a town in Europe and it had an incredible timepiece that would play a hymn every hour. Praise ye the Lord. Well one day the clock stopped ringing with that hymn. And so they called for a repairman and he came and 
they discovered that a brown butterfly had found its way into the gears, and that stopped the music. So I'm telling you, don't let some brown butterfly <laughs> steal your joy. Let the bugs out. Be of good cheer. You can be cheerful no matter what. 1 John 5.24, this is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. And one of his commands is what? Be of what? Be of what? Somebody say be of what? Good cheer. Good cheer. Well, one day a, a, an old grumpy man and his wife were on a road trip. They stopped at a roadside restaurant for lunch. And after finishing their meal, they left the restaurant. And after being on the road for about 45 minutes, the elderly woman realized she left her glasses on the table. She didn't miss them until they'd been driving for 40 minutes and then realized the mistake. They had to keep going more miles before they could turn around and go back. Well, all the way back to the restaurant, that old man, that grumpy old man, he fussed and complained. You know people like that. He just fussed and he scolded his wife the whole time. He wouldn't let up for a minute. When they finally got to the restaurant, she was getting out of the car. He shouted, and while you're in there, you might as well get my hat and credit card that I left. In all things, be a and God, all God, all God asks you to do, all God, ooh, listen, 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 all God asks you to do, He will give you the strength to do it. He would never tell you be of good cheer and not give you the strength to do it. You know, before Elvis Presley died, he was being interviewed. Somebody asked him, when you first started playing music, you said you wanted to be rich and famous and happy. Are you happy? Elvis Presley said, I'm lonely as hell. <laughs> Cheerfulness is heaven born. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am giving you cheer. You're not going to get it from a bank account. It is a fragrance of divine origin that makes your life sweet. Sweet. You are not going to get me to be grumpy in my own house. For what? I am going to be a. So I ask myself, you know, that, that's, should I ever allow myself to be discouraged? No. Isn't that, remember that beautiful hymn? Why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion my constant friend is he cause his eye somebody say his eye is on the sparrow and I know he's watching me I choose to be of good cheer Many years ago, a little boy was limping down the street on a crutch. But he was smiling and whistling a, a happy tune. And some, some, someone said to him, Sonny, little boy, crippled as you are, how can you whistle? The little boy said, my legs may be crippled, but my heart ain't crippled. He gives me good 
cheer. Good cheer. So today, there's somebody here today, and you needed this word. I can tell by your face behind the mask you needed. <laughs> you need to cheer up. Can I read you something from Ellen White? Ellen White says, don't let your children see you discouraged and depressed. Do not let your children see you with a clouded brow. Let your pleasant, cheerful words ever be like sunbeams and sunshine in your family. Husband, encourage your wife with cheerful words. My poor wife, I don't know how she takes it. She hears, you look beautiful, you are wonderful, I love you. She hears that all day long. <laughs> Encourage your wife, Ellen White says, with cheerful words. Nothing but pleasant, cheerful words should ever escape from your lips. Hey, hey, and if she tells you, you just told her something that was not cheerful, suck it up. <laughs> amen, somebody say amen. Take, take it as a little encouragement or admonition from the Lord to, do, you know, to say something else cheerful. She says, if you let perplexities and worries of everyday life fret your mind, cloud your brow, you will always have something to annoy you. Today, if you needed this word from God, Jesus said, you will have troubles, you will have trials, but be of good cheer. Even on your deathbed, you can be of good cheer. I just got a text as I was coming up here today from a captain in the U.S. Navy who said to me, you were so kind to call and pray with my father. I want you to know he passed away today. And then I love this. He said, <laughs> I'm going to read it to you. He said, I'm looking forward to seeing him again with his holy hammer. Hope one day that he will hear you sing amazing grace in glory. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, thank you. I just want to say thank you. I thank you that you put this word in the Bible. Cheer up. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've already won for you. So when we get up, Lord, and we put on our clothes, remind us to put on a cheerful face. And help us to remember that the sunshine that we radiate from our faces will shine back in our lives. We don't have to faint. 
Now is not the time to be discouraged. No matter how difficult or how, how tough our situation, we can choose to be of good cheer. Is there somebody here today who wants to say, Lord, thank you for overcoming the world for me. Thank you for teaching me that I can be of good cheer. Oh, my brother, my sister, if you're one of those people who've been encouraged by this word today and want to say, Lord, let me live this word. Let me not just hear it, but teach me to live it, to be of good cheer all day, every day, no excuses, 24-7. Be of good cheer. Help me, Lord. If you want to ask the Lord for the strength that you need to live this admonition, I want you to stand on your feet right now. Say, Lord, give me the strength to live this word. I want to be one of those people who living out that word that you said, be of what? Good cheer. Good cheer. Oh, if you mean it, slip out of the aisle. Come to this altar. I want to pray with you. Stand. Yeah, take that step of faith. Come on, slip out of the aisle. Come on, walk down to this altar. God is calling you to come now. Come, just come. Yes, you, my sister, you, you, my brother, Come, we're going to pray. We're going to pray together that God will give you the strength. God will give you the faith. God will give you what you need to live out this divine admonition to be of good cheer. Of good cheer. Oh, hallelujah, God. Somebody say hallelujah, God. Oh, let's start that beautiful hymn. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? And long for heaven and home Since Jesus is my portion And my constant friend His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he's watching me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he's watching over me. Oh, lift your voice and sing it Now I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because I'm free. And I know he's watching over me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he's watching.
watching over me. Oh, Father in heaven, you've seen those who've come forward today. You know the troubles. You know the trials. You know the tribulations. You told us they would be there. But then you said, be of good cheer. Cheer up. For I have overcome the world. Father, we're going to leave this church today lifted up, thankful, that you overcame the whole world. For this we choose to be of good cheer. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I needed this word today. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Amen and amen and amen. good chair. Church, I want you to look at this young woman here. This is Miss Chelsea. And like all the other students before her that I've introduced, she's also going off to college this week. And we are greatly, I mean, more than anything, we're going to miss her, her smile, her humbleness, and her deep faith in God. And I want to congratulate her and also have the elders come and pastor please come up so we can pray for her, for her success in her future. She's going to be close, but she won't be here with us every Sabbath and we're going to miss her. So Sister Calder, are you here? Can you please come up please too? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a word to go, go off to school on. Oh, who else is going away? Hey, Sister Jessica. Praise the Lord. Oh, all right. Chelsea and Jessica, we're going to pray for them. Father, Thank you for Chelsea, her love for you, her commitment to you. Thank you for Jessica, her love for you, her commitment to you. We ask, oh God, as they go off to college, to this adventure, seeking their destiny, oh God, surround them with your protection, surround them with your provision, Surround them with your presence, your power, your peace. You've promised if wisdom is needed and intellect is needed, that if we just ask you, you'll give it to us liberally. Oh, may they enjoy their experience in learning and preparing their lives to serve you. This is my prayer for them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen.
before I come off the stage, I do want to say something. Um, I am thankful to Miss Denise for bringing me up here <laughs> because I wouldn't have probably come up on my own. But um, I do want to say thank you to each and every single one of you. I mean, I really appreciate the family that I've gotten from this church. And, you know, all the things that I've learned since I've been here is just amazing what God has done for me and what God has, like, allowed me to do because of all of you. So I just want to thank all of you and also thank God for the experiences. And I just promise you that I will hold on to them throughout college. I promise you. <laughs> Uh, God bless you all. I want as many numbers as I can get. Please, please keep in contact with me and also pray for me and all of us. Jessica as well. She's going off too. Yeah, she's still here. Yeah, <laughs> all of us who are going to college because, like, it's a different world out there. So I just please pray for us, all of us. Thank you. certainly will miss Chelsea but all I'm asking the all of us to do is to pray for these students all of them have been really 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 good children and we will miss them they are all our kids so remember keep Chelsea and all the other kids who are going off to college in your prayers and as I say to you also, as Pastor Phipps, thank you so much for that, those wonderful reminders. I should say to everyone here, refuse to be discouraged. And in my other word for you here, be of good cheer. And now for the benediction. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace. To him be the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. And amen. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life leads you.
his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, for our sins He suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus, the crucified. Sound His praises. Jesus, who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Our blessed Redeemer, heavenly waters, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is come. 